now that you've understood this and learned it, the obvious next question you will have is, what if I do have a surface, a closed surface, but a charge inside? Will the net flux in this case be zero? And now again, our intuition points that it will not be zero, right? Because you have a fountain, you have a source, and it's throwing something out if it's a positive charge or collecting if, like a sink if it's a negative charge. So there must be something happening here. So to do this, let's begin with the simplest possible case, the most symmetric one. What is that? A sphere. Let's consider a sphere of radius r and keep a point charge right at the center. So the super special case, right? And calculate the net flux through that closed sphere because of this point charge. Let the point charge be positive in Q. You're not losing any generality by doing that. So we have your sphere over here. Now, why did we choose a sphere? Because we are lazy. Our E dot dA becomes extremely easy. Why? Because the angle between E and the area vector is going to be what? Yeah, zero degrees, right? Because the area vector is going to point along the radius. That's how a sphere works. And your electric field, because of the fact that the charge is there, is going to point right radial that way. So you can forget the dot over there. It's just the product of the magnitudes at every single point. Now the next good thing is that it's a sphere and there is spherical symmetry. KQ1, Q2 by R squared makes it so that if you do calculate the electric field at any point on that sphere, the answer will be equal. The magnitude of it will be equal. Of course, the direction is going to be different. So what can you do? All you have to do now is calculate the electric field at one of those points and multiply it with the surface area of that sphere, right? So problem becomes much simpler because we've chosen a very symmetric sphere in our case. So what's the electric field at that point? It's going to be KQ by R squared, right? The R is the radius of the sphere. So we know that our K is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, but yeah, let, let's keep it that way. So if you've done this now, then what's the area of the sphere? Because you have to multiply it with that and then you have your flux. And that was the question. So it's going to be positive or negative? The flux is going to be positive, right? Yeah. So what is the area of this? Let's say you mugged up in your real small kids now. 4 pi r squared is the surface area of the sphere. We know why and all, we don't know. You can integrate and get the answer, but that's your answer. So you're going to have kq by r squared multiplied by 4 pi r squared as your flux, net flux through the surface with a charge q at the center. Now observe something now. Have you already observed it? What is that? Some very important variable is going away. What's going away? The radius of the sphere is going away. So you have kq into 4 pi as your answer. kq into 4 pi has nothing to do with your radius of the sphere. Which means that whatever radius you've taken, you have got the same answer. Now hold on to that result because this means that I could have taken a much much larger sphere or a much much smaller sphere and the net flux through that would have been the same. Of course our intuition still points in that direction which is why our water analogy and a fountain is working here. Right? If you had a fountain which is throwing water out, it doesn't matter what size of a surface I keep around it, I'm going to catch the same amount of water. Right? Yeah. Now let's observe one more interesting thing. If you bring that equation over here, you have kq into 4 pi, but what is k? Right? k is your 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. And there what's going to happen is the 4 pi and the 4 pi are going to cancel now. So you get the flux to be equal to q by epsilon naught. Of course, if that's a vacuum and if q by epsilon, if it is some other medium. So you're getting the net flux through a sphere to be equal to q by epsilon naught. And it's independent of the radius. And that's beautiful, right? Now I want you to think of one thing, right? One question it could be is, what if I move this charge away from the center of that sphere? What would happen? What would happen if I add more than one charge over here? That's another question. The third question is, what would happen if I make this not a sphere? Like, what if it's an irregular shape? So let's begin with this statement. What is our statement? This we have proved. What have we proved? That if I have a charge at the center of a sphere, then the net flux passing through that sphere, independent of the radius, is Q by epsilon naught. So your statement one, which is, if I have a surface, a closed surface, and no charge inside, the net flux through it is zero. And if I have a sphere and a charge Q in the center, the net flux through it is Q by epsilon naught. Now using this, these two, let's see if we can go to the next step. 